Hello and welcome to Decoding. In today's video, I will be reviewing the highly requested Lenovo Legion Go. We can finally examine its performance, features and design in depth. In this video, I will discuss its main pros and cons and we will also see how the Legion Go compares to its main rivals Asus ROG Ally and Valve's Steam Deck. I'm also planning to make more videos on the Legion Go. So let me know in the comments below what else you would like to see. Also, please make sure to subscribe so you won't miss them. Without further ado, this is Legion Go. When the Legion Go was announced back in September, it generated a lot of buzz and excitement. I have been using the Legion Go for about a month now. I even took it on a three-week trip to Vietnam with me. Although, I had my Nintendo Switch OLED with me, I didn't use it once. As you might already be able to tell, despite its imperfections, I really like the Legion Go and I will explain why. But first, let me rewind and let's talk about the basics. The Legion Go is Lenovo's first handheld gaming console and it is, of course, heavily influenced by products such as Nintendo Switch, Steam Deck and Asus ROG Ally. And that's really beneficial. With more competition, companies will experiment and push technology even further. And in the end, we, the customers, are the ones who will benefit from all this. Looking at design, we can see that it is much more subtle than Asus ROG. Featuring thinner bezels and 16 by 10 aspect ratio, the Legion Go uses 8.8 inch IPS panel which can reach up to 500 nits of brightness and supports a resolution of up to 2560 by 1600. It is important to mention that this is the largest screen compared to Asus ROG and Steam Deck. The Steam Deck has a 7-inch 16x10 panel with up to 60Hz refresh rate and 800p resolution, while the Ally has the 7-inch 16x9 FHD panel with up to 120Hz refresh rate. As many of you have correctly pointed out in the comments on my other Legion Go videos, the Legion Go does not have VRR, and the truth is, I don't care since I haven't noticed any negative effects from its absence. I have a PS5 and Xbox Series X paired with the LG TV that supports VRR. While it runs great, I don't feel the lack of VRR while using the Legion Go. Returning to specs, the Go supports 144Hz refresh rate, which can be manually switched to 60Hz to save battery life. Clearly, the Legion Go has the largest, fastest, highest resolution panel, but that's only a benefit if it doesn't affect the weight too much and if you can actually utilize all those extra pixels. Regarding weight, Go sits at 845 grams, while Asus ROG Ally is 608 grams and the Steam Deck is 669 grams. Legion Go is the heaviest of the group, but to be fair, it doesn't feel heavy while in use. At least for me, you guys might have different experience after gaming for for some time. Now, because Go has detachable controllers, you can pop them out and use the built-in kickstand which can be set at almost infinite angles. Sit back and game like that. It works surprisingly well due to shape of the controller, but it would be nicer if Legion Go came with a middle attachment piece like Switch does. The hinge feels sturdy and it is very reminiscent of the one on Nintendo Switch. The controllers are super lightweight and therefore when connected to the main unit, the weight feels well balanced. There are a total of 20 buttons on Legion Go and 10 of those, including triggers, are user mappable and can be customized for specific game and play style. The buttons on the rear are designed to satisfy pro users who are accustomed to pro controllers from Microsoft and Sony, but I haven't personally used them during my sessions. However, I did notice a lot of accidental presses, which could be annoying at times. Overall, all the buttons and triggers have a great feedback. They have a satisfying travel distance, no complaints there. Once again, Legion Go is the only one of the bunch that is using Hall Effect joysticks to prolong its lifespan and prevent accidental drifting. The trackpad is mainly for navigating around windows since using a touchscreen on such a small device isn't ideal. 
you can of course also use a trackpad for some FPS and strategy games. The Legion Go also supports something called FPS mode, which essentially turns your right controller into a vertical cursor. When I first heard about it, I thought it was just a stupid gimmick, but after actually using it, I changed my mind since it works flawlessly and it gives you another way to interact with games on the go. You see, FPS mode isn't designed to replace a mouse and keyboard for competitive multiplayer FPS games, but it is designed for better navigation while playing single player FPS games. Lenovo includes this disc that attaches magnetically to the bottom of the right controller where the DPI sensor is housed. Now let's talk about specs. We have already mentioned the display. In terms of CPU and memory, the Legion Go offers components that we have seen in handhelds before, including AMD Ryzen Z1 Extreme, 16 gigs of LPDDR5X RAM and up to 1TB of PCIe 4.0 NVMe SSD. But even though these specs are not unprecedented, what is special about Legion Go is its approach to a handheld form factor. The fact that Lenovo engineers took the risk and advanced the handheld form factor with detachable controllers, FPS mode and larger panel paired with great thermal design works really really well. Storage can be expanded up to an additional 2TB thanks to micro SD card reader. For those who are worried about the issues that ROG Ally faced with SD cards, I can confirm that I've been using 1TB SanDisk Extreme Pro for just over a month now without any issues. Besides that, we have two times USB 4.0 Type-C ports, one at the top and the other on the bottom. The Legion Go comes with a really nice pouch which will protect your investment during travel. For example, this little flap allows you to charge your device with included 65 watt charger while it's in the case, which is simply brilliant. There's also a headphone jack, but I suspect most users will opt for Bluetooth headphones. This is where Legion Go really falls behind the speakers. The Go uses two 2 watt speakers and they are at the best pathetic. I hope we will see an improvement here with the second generation. Legion Space is a software that runs on top of Windows 11, providing an experience akin to that of a console. It allows you to link all your favorite launchers and change settings from RGB to resolution. In theory, you don't need to leave Legion Space in order to use Legion Go and play your favorite games. However, the reality is that software still needs some refinements. There are plenty of bugs and it doesn't always work the way I would like it to. Nevertheless, it does have a touch and small screen friendly UI that is easy to navigate and very intuitive. The in-game quick settings overlay gives an option to toggle most important settings without leaving the game. Here we can quickly change not only volume and brightness, but also the thermal mode, TDP mode, resolution and RGB. You can even check the performance monitor and the battery life and all three components of this handheld console. I hope Legion Space will improve with further updates as it has a lot of potential to simplify the gaming experience for many, but as for now, it is simply not there yet. The Legion Go features 49.2 watt hour battery, while each controller has capacity of 900 mAh. As for the actual battery life, this is extremely hard to measure since it depends on the set resolution, refresh rate, brightness, performance mode, thermal mode, and of course the game you are playing. Playing an indie game versus a AAA title will of course result in vastly different battery lives. Therefore, without delving too deeply into this complex subject, I can confirm that you will get roughly 2-3 to three hours of battery life playing AAA game on mid settings and native resolution while on balanced thermal mode. We also know that factors such as battery life can improve in future thanks to driver updates and some further fine tuning done by Legion team. If you want me to focus purely on battery life, let me know in the comments below and I will make a video dedicated to this topic. Now be 
before we start talking about performance, we need to get a few things straight. If you are coming from a console such as PS5, Xbox Series X or S or even Nintendo Switch, you need to consider the fact that this is essentially a tiny gaming PC. To get some games to run smoothly and the way you want, it takes some adjustments and playing around with settings. On the other hand, if you are coming from a PC gaming, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You just need to lower your expectations in terms of performance because at the end of the day, this is a very small gaming PC with limited performance. Once again, if you want to learn purely about performance and FPS and depth, let me know in the comments and I will make a video where I will compare several games under different scenarios such as resolution, performance mode and thermal mode since these will all affect how much FPS and battery life you can squeeze out of this device. Legion Go checks most of the boxes of what a good handheld gaming console should be and it does many things better than the competition while costing the same. However, this is only the beginning. I'm sure we will see more handhelds from other manufacturers and we will also likely see second generations of the Asus ROG Li and the Steam Deck soon. Since there's clearly a demand, Nintendo is due to release their next handheld in 2024. I think we are living a very exciting time if you are into handheld gaming. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.